Is this is this thing on? Can can you hear me? Hey everybody, this is Sean here, and I just wanted to come at you real quick and talk to you um, about this video. Uh, a lot of you might read the title and the thumbnail and think, well, this might be another one of those, you know, be self-taught programmer because college sucks because it's a major institution that causes you nothing but debt. Well, some of those facts may be true. That is not what this video is about at all. There's tons of videos out there comparing college with programming boot camps or being self-taught, uh, but they leave out a lot of really important information. And from somebody who is currently a graduate student in college, I wanted to give you information from the perspective of somebody who is not only in college, but who is you know, also a self-taught programmer and who's taken tons of different lessons, courses, boot camps, you name it, to learn different technologies. But there's a lot of information that I've never heard nobody talk about and there's a lot of differences that you need to be aware of because I want to provide the best information possible so you can make the best decision moving forward in your career in programming and learning code. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Today, I wanted to talk to you guys about the difference between learning you know, programming and coding by going to college versus being self-taught from the perspective of somebody who's actually a grad student going to college as we speak, and somebody who's taken tons of online boot camps and courses and watched, oh man, I don't even know how many YouTube videos, but tons of them. And I wanted to give you guys some insight of information that I'm not really hearing anybody talk about that I think you might find very important. So whether you're trying to land a new job, start a new career, or get into the tech industry for the first time because you're just passionate and driven about learning how to code, or maybe you're just tired of working in the job that you're at, or you know you think you're at a dead end, you wanna learn something new, whatever the case may be, I wanna provide you with the best information and give you my insights so that way you can make the best decision uh, to you know pursue whatever goals you have. And that is my goal of this video. So before we get into it, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like this video because I'm sure you're gonna find a ton of value out of it no matter what your goals are. Now we all know it's a common fact that pretty much you can learn anything you want online. Like all the information is out there. Elon Musk has even came out and said. You don't need college to learn, it, learn stuff, okay? Everything is available basically for free. Uh, you can learn anything you want for free. It is not a question of learning. Like anything you ever wanna know is online and you can learn it for free. And if you learn it, you don't need a degree to come get a job. And that's totally correct because you got companies at Google, Facebook, and countless other companies that do not require a college degree. As long as you can apply the skills um, and you know, you know the practices and the principles behind the technology or the job position that you're applying for, they'll hire you. And this is a real thing. A lot of people get in all the time without having a college degree. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because there are a lot of things that, you know, a lot, a lot of misconceptions that people have when it comes to being a self-taught programmer as opposed to going to college. And I want to discuss these things. But before I discuss these things, I want to talk about, you know, for all you guys out there who have never wrote a line of code in your life, you come into this like I did and you want to learn how to code. And a lot of you think, well, what language do I start with? Um, I need to pick a specific language and, and learn that language. Uh, well, here's the thing. You need to understand that learning how to code is just a tool in your tool belt. Programming, we can think of it like the studs inside the house, the, the frame of the house, okay? Just like here in my room. All right, now, outside of the frame of this house, we have what people interact with, the interface, which is the walls, the paint, the ceiling, the doors, the light switches, you name it. These are all the cosmetic things that we interact with, just like we interact with a UI um, on your mobile device or a website. Now, Let's take it a step further. We have the wires through the walls, the plumbing, the internet, and you got all these things that interconnect the rooms together, but also talk to the companies outside who charge you like a ton of money every month, right? Now, in programming sense for this analogy, that would be the logic. That would be all the abstraction and logic um, of using complex code uh, and data structures and, and you name it, design patterns to you know put these rooms together to make them talk, to connect to the outside world. And my point of what I'm trying to tell you, let me get closer, here, is that programming is the tool we use to bring different technologies together to make single viable applications or different services that can be used in the real world, online, via mobile device, video game, desktop, computer, you name it. And that's what we're doing. Programming is the tool we use to weave all these technologies together. My point is, I just want you to be clear and understanding um, 
that you're not just learning to code. You're not just picking out a language and learning some language. And then, you know, I don't want you to have these expectations that by learning that language, you're going to get some job because there's a ton of principles behind that language that you need to understand to tie different technologies together with said language. And honestly, if it was up to me to pick a language today, um, I would probably start with either Python if you want to do more logical stuff. Um, you know, more back-end stuff, talking to the world, stuff that's not seen. But if you want to get seen, I would start with HTML. If you never wrote a line of code, I would. I would start with HTML, learn CSS, and then move to JavaScript so you can learn the logical abstractions that you need to learn uh, for coding. All right, so let's go ahead and let's talk about the pros and cons of going to college being versus being a self-taught programmer, okay? Now, first of all, let's talk about the pros of being self-taught. Well, you've got information online. You've got tons of resources online. You've got, you know, tons of Discord and Slack channels. You've got Stack Overflow. You've got GitHub with tons of projects on there. You've got YouTube with millions of videos you can watch and courses you can take and, you know, micro courses. It's a ton of information. But here's the problem is that there's a ton of information. There's literally an information overflow. For people who know nothing about tech trying to get into it, they're gonna spend a ton of time you know, researching, trying to find where they can get their foot in the door and where they should start at. And there's really no good starting point or good entry point for people who have never written a line of code or don't understand technology at all. And, and that's a major problem. So there's just a lot of information out there and it's very overwhelming for people trying to get into this industry. And it gets discouraging for a lot of people. And I've seen people and I know people who have tried to get into it and they get turned off by it because they can't find the right path. Uh, and it's because their goals aren't clearly defined uh, with what the information is. Now, another thing that is wrong with being self-taught is that there's really no collaboration unless you find it and spend that time, that ton of time researching and, and you know digging through the overload of information then yeah, you can find Discord groups and Facebook groups and maybe, you know, go to your local meetups, which is always a good thing. Go to local code meetups. Uh, go to meetup.com if you want to do that. Um, and I'm by no way sponsored by them. I just, I do meetups and they're, they've helped me out a ton. You get to collaborate and communicate with people in real time. You don't get to do that, you know, being a self-taught program. You're behind your computer by yourself. If you got a question, you got to look it up or you got to depend on somebody else's information uh, to get you through the problem and that comes to my other problem is that you know there's so much information out there a lot of it is not relevant well some of it still is like you can go watch a like a, a react course um, that is using the old paradigm of classes instead of hooks from two years ago you go learn in this program and then you find out well you know i just spent all this time learning this but you know everybody's using react hooks so where am i at so you spend a lot of time working on irrelevant information. The other thing is, while well, we can go to YouTube and see industrial professionals and you know uh, people who have made you know, real contributions to programming and tech, and we can watch their videos, is we don't have access to talk to these people in reality unless we try to Facebook them or stalk them. Or no, I'm just kidding about that last one, by the way. Or you know find a discord channel or a group that they might be in and we don't have access to people so there's no access to you know people there's no people we can collaborate with we got to determine whether the information is relevant or not uh, we got a ton of time we're investing into trying to dig through the overload of information and all the noise that that information provides and that consumes us when we're trying to be self-taught and that is a major problem so for being self-taught but yet again, it is free. And if you do find the right path, then you can learn the right skills. But who do you trust? Who do you know what to go to? What information is good? What, what information is still relevant? You don't know that just coming into the tech game because there's an information overflow. Now, let's talk about college for a minute because everybody knows that college is institutionalized, that it's got a lot of politics involved in it, that you know you can go into debt because they overcharge for tuition and there's all these caveats and things. You're taking tons of your own time. You gotta you know, basically block out several years of your life to finish this program. Um, and you know that's a big turnoff to a lot of people and they're justified in that and I totally agree with them. As somebody who's currently going to college, um, it really depends on what your goals are and your ambitions uh, to wanting to go to college. 
But let's discuss this for a minute because going to college, while it might have all these really bad things, there's a lot of bad stereotypes wrapped around it, which I agree with most of them, and they are totally true. Let's look at the positive aspects of going to college. Well, first of all, you've got structure. You've got classes that are structured like you don't really have online unless you did do all that noise where you have set classes and periods of time, usually semesters or quarters, which is three months um, or you know half of that being a quarter and you take a specific discipline. You learn a specific skill. You learn it from not knowing nothing about it to actually applying it and learning all about it by the end of the course. And you're doing this you know, every semester with three or four courses and you're learning key skills that are directly transferable to the job industry. And that is why you see a lot of job offerings say that they require a bachelor's degree because there are things that you need to understand. There are principles and skills that you need to have besides just learning how to code. You need software engineering principles. You need to know about life cycles. You need to know about project management and scoping out projects and document control and version control and all these other paradigms that go along with programming so you can tie all these technologies together uh, with code. And that is what college gives you on one aspect. The other thing it gives you is the collaboration. You got people you're going to school with that you can actually talk to you one on one. You can, you know, collaborate, bounce ideas off each other. Uh, and that helps people grow more than anything because that, that's a communication barrier that we have online trying to be self taught. The other thing is, is we have access to industrial professionals. Pretty much all your professors out there, well, the majority of them, uh, they've worked in the big tech companies, they've worked in the global industries, or they've written and contributed to peer-reviewed research and papers uh, through their doctorates that you know have contributed to you know um, mind-altering, uh, game-changing technologies that are being applied in the real world today. For example, one of the professors that I'm currently studying under right now, his team of PhDs and, and master students did a challenge, was it, uh, several years back to build the um, recommendation algorithm for Netflix. I mean, you're, you're working with industrial professionals here who've got real experience and you get to pick their brains, you get to ask them questions, you get to work on projects that they give you, and um, you know you get to talk to them, communicate with them one-on-one. -on -one. You don't get that being self-taught unless you get lucky and you find the right path through all that noise. And here's one more thing. For all of you guys out there who are worried about the debt factor about being in college, uh, if you have a job, and depending on your income level and how many people you got in your house and all that stuff, um, you can pay monthly cash payments to your school, and they'll work out a payment plan with you. And while you do that, you can take out what's called your Pell Grant. And a Pell Grant is that. It's a grant where you get um, several thousand dollars, you know, two, six, eight, depending on what your um, situation is. And you get to take out several thousand dollars that you get given to you every semester that you never have to pay back. You know, it's free money for you going to school. And you don't have to take out a student loan and put yourself in debt because you can pay your uh, tuition on a monthly cash payment plan. But here's the thing you got to understand um, there are ways uh, to not be in debt uh, and to, you know, kind of subside the stereotypes of school. But yeah, you're not going to get rid of some of the things like the politics and the uh, institutionalization of it. But that's why I'm talking to you guys today, because I wanted to give you guys the best information, information from my perspective of being in school and being self-taught. Um, I want you guys to have the best information possible to move forward. Now, I got a lot of you guys asking me about the boot camps, whether you should take them or not. Well, I mean, the boot camps, let's talk about these for a second. Um, depending on what boot camp you go to, they're going to teach you um, the basics, the fundamentals of what you need to know uh, to you know get your foot wet at least give you the intuition you need uh, to you know take yourself forward and learn more advanced you know topics within computer science but that's all up to you but most of them uh, it's worth it but uh, it'll save you a bunch of time it'll save you that time through that noise of trying to do everything yourself and finding the right videos on YouTube or trying to find the right courses and stuff like that and it's it's really up to you and it really depends on your goals uh, there's so much good information out there it's overwhelming and that's the problem and i just wanted to stop here and ask you guys you know if you're getting any value from this video go ahead and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends so that way the youtube algorithms will put this video up where other people can see it and get this information so they can be helped as well now despite whatever your goals are 
whether you're trying to advance your career or get into a new trade um, or trying to build your own tech startup, whatever your goals are, I would really like to know. Leave it in the description below. Why are you trying to get into tech? Why are you trying to learn in tech? Why are you trying to discern between going to college and being a self-taught programmer? You know, let me know in the description below. Let's interact and let's have some accountability because accountability online for self-taught programmers is very important and it's very scarce. Now, like I said, you can find creators like me who have Discord channels where people collaborate and we talk about different ideas and we build projects and we help each other grade each other's work and, you know, help each other solve problems uh, so that way, you know, people can learn. It's becoming a more common practice, but you got to really know where to get into to get that. And you got a lot of people out there who are just, you know, so focused on being creators and starting a business with their channel that, you know, they're too busy to interact with you online. Um, so you got to remember that as well. Uh, but here's the point. I made a curriculum. If I was to start completely over without ever going to college and I wanted the same information that I have now, with the same skill sets that I have, I would take this curriculum of courses, which I have taken actually everything on that list I have done. Uh, but if I would have known and had a structure, if I had a, had this curriculum, I, I would have probably shaved about, you know, three or four years off of my learning curve. Uh, so this curriculum is cool and I put it together because it's exactly what I would do if, um, you know, I wanted to avoid college. But you're going to have to have some discipline to sit down and actually do these things. And I've made a completely different video going over this curriculum and going over uh, some productivity tips, uh, <laughs> going over some productivity tips that'll help you, uh, you know, schedule applying these things while you have a job and while you're doing life because uh, everybody's doing life and it gets busy. You can't just sit in front of a computer for 12 hours a day, you know, learning how to code. If I didn't answer any of your guys' questions in this video, let me know in the description below or go visit me on my Discord channel or my Facebook group. The links are down there below. Um, and let me know. Let's talk. Let's have a conversation. Let's get to know each other. That's what I want to do. Um, I want to help you reach your goals because if I would have had somebody like me, you know, eight years ago, um, you know, I, I would have treasured that. I would have, I would have been really grateful for an opportunity like that. And that's what I'm trying to provide here. And I've been through a lot of different things and I've accomplished a lot of goals. So, um, I want to share that with you guys and help you guys out. So, um, other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you later.